to Ukraine now, where Ukrainian forces are struggling to hold back a wave of Russian assaults in the east. Moscow says it has captured several hundred square kilometers of Ukrainian territory since the beginning of the year. Kyiv says it is suffering from a lack of soldiers and delays in deliveries from its Western allies. The shortages have allowed the Russians to advance in many places like Avdivka. Now they have their sights set on Chazivyar. A Ukrainian retreat there could jeopardize the defense of the entire region. Our correspondent Nick Connolly has this report. Anything less than breakneck speed is just too risky on these roads. We're heading towards Chazivyar. With Russian troops now just a few kilometers away, Russian drones overhead are a constant threat. This Ukrainian commander's unit has been tasked with shooting them down. A week or two ago was the last time we downed a drone. The last time we got a Lancet drone was more than three weeks ago. The weather's been good. They're flying too high. You can't hit them with our guns. A hedgerow and a shallow dugout are as much cover as these men have. This counts as a quiet day around here. Often enough, the shells are much closer. Look over there. That's where a shell hit last night. And another one came in about 100 meters further. It was about 1.30 in the morning. The shrapnel came flying past. The crater was pretty small, but there was a lot of shrapnel. Not everyone can ignore the noise. The unit's dog spends most of her time hiding. Palich tells us they used to have a cat that showed little sign of being scared. It was only later, when the cat was run over by a car, they realized there was a reason the cat had managed to stay so calm. It was deaf. Out here, exposed to drones and shells and fighting with the previous generation's leftover weapons, it's hard to believe that $60 billion worth of US aid is now on its way. We'll believe the aid is coming when we see it for ourselves. We can't see or feel any difference yet. For now, we've been withdrawing from places like Avdivka, and the Russians have been taking villages. We haven't been able to turn things around yet. All the talk here is about shells, or rather the lack of them. In 2023, regular Western deliveries allowed Ukraine to briefly close the gap in firepower with Russia. No longer. Ukrainian military command says Russia is outgunning its troops five or six to one. Many here believe the true figure is closer to ten to one. Suddenly, there's activity on the radios. I ask whether I correctly understood that a Russian Lancet drone had hit a Ukrainian target. Yes, it was a hit. It found its target. They've got their reconnaissance drones up there all the time. They find a target and attack straight away. Chasivyar, like Bakhmut before it, has been flattened by Russian artillery. If Western help gets here in a hurry, Ukrainian soldiers say they can still hold on to the ruins. But if Russia manages to take Chasivyar and the high ground that surrounds it, Many we spoke to believe defending the remainder of Ukrainian-held Donetsk region could soon be untenable. Holding out, outgunned by Russia and undersupplied by the West, has come at a price. If the aid had come on time, things would have been very different. Because of the delays, many, many good men have died. It's a rare moment of reflection. Everyone here is acutely aware of rumors that Vladimir Putin has ordered his generals to take Chasivyar by Russia's May the 9th Victory Day holiday. And if anyone's going to stop them, it's these soldiers. I'm joined now by Gustav Kressel, a senior policy fellow with the European Council on Foreign Relations. Welcome to DW. Can you tell us again why Chasivyar is just so important? Well, it's a hillside uh, from where you have good view in the more neighboring valleys. So if you command the high ground, you have permanent observation and fire control options over a couple of other values, uh, valleys. And that will make defending them difficult. That would make uh, supplying a, a Ukrainian forward positions uh, difficult to impossible. So if 
just if you would fall, Ukrainians would have to withdraw to uh, deeper lines, which are much further away from where they currently are, and would have to give up further settlements probably on the way. Uh, that's why it's so contested. Okay. Explain to us how Russia has been taking advantage of the fact that Ukraine is still waiting uh, for more weapons deliveries from its allies. We, we just heard it in the report there uh, that so many men have been lost. But, but give us a sense of how Russia is really sort of capitalising on this. Well, they have a superiority in firepower, first and foremost. Uh, the lack of Ukrainian artillery shells allows Russia, first of all, to withdraw heavy equipment that has been damaged by drones, but drones only damage these equipment and destroy it. Um, that gets repaired, turned around and sent to the front. Uh, it allows them to fire at Ukrainian positions at basically unhindered uh, because counter battery fire, that is artillery firing at other artillery uh, has been curtailed on the Ukrainian side for the lack of shells. Um, uh, and uh, finally, blocking fire. So if, if there is a Russian attack going on, um, how many shells can you throw at the attack to destroy uh, the vehicles uh, that are advancing and destroy the men uh, uh, who are advancing? Uh, if the blocking fire runs short, then of course more uh, Russian soldiers will, will survive the assault and break into Ukrainian positions. Uh, and that is, that is then a problem of itself. Mm -hmm. While Ukraine is so low on ammunition, while it's still waiting for more weapons de deliveries, what is its strategy right now? I mean, is it managing in any way at all to keep Russia at bay? Well, they're trying to contain the losses as far as they can. Um, the first batches of aid have already arrived and we see on the Russian loss counter that they have done a good work so far. Uh, but of course, uh, even the full US supplement will only allow Ukraine to, to sort of lower the gap and, and remain an easy defense, but not allow them any sort of fire priority over the Russians. That also we have to be aware of. Um, the other problem, and then the video was actually good showing that, is that Ukraine lacks a lot of uh, Soviet air defense missiles that have been serving at the front, Strelas, Ozas, um, these shot down the Russian reconnaissance drones and did not allow Russia to reconnoit the Ukrainian rear, their artillery positions, etc. Uh, and that is a huge problem independently of all Western aid because the West doesn't have equivalents to these uh, Soviet uh, missiles. The Ukrainians now developing uh, their own weapons, interceptor drones, other kind of improvised uh, defenses to try to cope uh, with this threat. Uh, we'll see how fast they can do that at scale because it's a huge problem. Okay, so okay. With, the, with the delays, you know, when the full amount of uh, Western aid, Western deliveries get there, will it have been too late? I don't think it will be too late because the war will go on for quite some time. The problem is how long then will Ukraine have to manage on these supplies? That's the other big question. Uh, Ukrainians need to plan the war. They need to know how much they can fire today, fire tomorrow, fire the next month, uh, fire the next month from now. Uh, and on this, uh, the West and not only the US, but also Europeans are a bit sketchy when it comes to promises. Uh, often the promises run late. Uh, often uh, the, the aim production is not what the real production then cranks out. Mm -hmm. And that makes it extremely difficult to really plan the war. Uh, Ukrainians probably will manage to contain the Russians for the time being, but it's really hard if you really don't know what's going to come or not going to come next month. Gustav Gressel from the European Council on Foreign Relations, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome.